Today I want to show you five amazing ways how to use brushes in Affinity Photo. Hello my friends, my name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. Let's get started with this tutorial. So the first thing that I want to show you is a gradient brush where the brush or the gradient is actually following the movement of the brush. Something that Affinity Photo is not natively supporting but you can trick it into doing it anyways. So the way you're doing that is that you select any kind of picture like this for example you can see it's a sunset picture we have a nice gradient from yellow over orange up to uh, violet I will uh, link this in the video description of course and when you have this picture you want to make sure that over here in the bracket it says pixel and not image if it says image right click on the layer and click rasterize down here to convert it into a pixels so the next thing you want to do is select over here on the left side the elliptical mark you tool this one, this, the circle one, and then hold your shift key, click and drag, and this will create a circle. And of course, you can move around the circle afterwards to select the area that you want to use. Next part is go up here to edit, copy, and make sure that you have the layer selected. It's pretty important because we want to sample from that part. So you copy and then go to file and new from clipboard so you will create a file like this and you can see we have a checkerboard in the background that means that these areas are transparent so the next thing to do is go to file export and select png on the far on the far left um, because this will preserve the transparency in the background and export it wherever you want it to export to so let's go back to our file and create the actual brush so first of all we need to have a pixel layer so I will create a new layer for our brush so I will call this test area test area there we go and up here you can see we have our brushes and you can actually make your own brush category um, next to it here in the in the right corner you have these lines click on them and here it says create new category so you can click on that create it name your own category I've already done that so down here I have my brushes you can see different brushes already created and to create our gradient brush the next thing we need to do is again click up here on these lines and select new image brush because we want to use the colors of the image so new image brush and this will ask us to use any file as the base of our brush I will select this one with our circle for the gradient brush select my brush tool on the left and you can see already um, there's something wrong oh I have to select the brush also and here you can see we already have our image and it will create something like this this is not perfect yet but it's already pretty interesting so I will delete this real quick and what we need to do next is go up here to more and first of all you want to set the spacing lower you if your computer is really good set it to one percent if it's not that good maybe set it to four percent that should still work pretty fine um, the next thing you want to do is go over to dynamics set the rotation to a hundred percent the rotation chitter and you can see here right now it's random so this is not what we want to use we want to use direction and this will uh, rotate our texture always in the direction that our brush is moving so with this selected you can see that now it is following but still we have these kind of chitters in there it's not really smooth so to fix that we have to click up here on stabilizer and select this icon here with the little circle in it and over here you can set the sensitivity of the stabilization I set it to 27 but you can use any kind of other value that is perfect for you or fits your working style better you can see here now it's a lot smoother and actually the gradient is following my brush you can see that the dark is always on one side of the brush and the light one is always on the other side and following my rotation so this makes a really nice uh, kind of impression so this is how you create a gradient brush that follows the rotation of the brush the next thing that I want to show you is actually using the same kind of technique but we are doing a different kind of selection from our original file so 
before I selected um, a circle, but now I'm going to select just a stripe from that. So uh, you would just go here, have your rectangle mark your tool and select any kind of stripe like this and do the same procedure as before. And when we go into our brush settings, let's hide this real quick. I will use the same brush. I will just change the texture actually. So let's use this, click up here on more with the brush selector. You can see here we are again in our settings and up here where it says textures, you can add or remove textures as you want. So as you can see before, I have already created a lot of different cutouts from this original picture and I'm going to use this stripe here. I'm going to remove the other one and now I have a stripe. You can see here, this is creating a stripe. But what I want to do with that actually is I want to go back into dynamics and with my rotation chitter, I will set this to 100% but keep it at random and then set the spacing lower. Yeah, I will actually set it to 1%. Let's set it to 2% uh, a bit smoother on my uh, computer processor. And I will make my brush a little bit bigger like this, for example, you can see now it's wildly rotating and this is actually creating a really nice look for our brush. Let's delete the stuff that we have in the background. Maybe actually reduce the um, spacing to 1%. So it's really small, it's really tight together and I will disable the stabilizer. You can see now we have a very nice effect. Sorry, my uh, computer is not the fastest. So we have these kind of hiccups a little bit, but you can see it looks really cool. I think it looks like different kind of colored paper. So it's a very nice look and it's really interesting to do that. Um, so that is a nice trick to do with different kind of colors and you can have a very creative look. But what you can do also with that uh, to make it even more creative, and this is the third trick to use the brushes, is instead of using something um, that is... Uh, how can I say, it's a selection from top to bottom, so uses the full width of the brush selection. What we can do actually, if you look here, I have a picture um, where the selection is off center. So you can see here, it's not going to the complete um, top of the selected area. And it's also not, um, I can say equal on, on both sides, it's irregular, it's a regular shape. And if you do that and you have the same random rotation, what you end up with is this interesting form uh, where you have these spikes looking out, stuff like that. And this can um, end up being a very interesting brush. As you can see here, when I move this along, this is getting me a really interesting look. And I can even go back into my settings and change my dynamic for the rotation so I don't get this full rotation. I can set it to a smaller value. And with the preview, you can see that you can end up with really interesting kind of shapes or um, dynamics. You can also change the size with the size chitter. Um, also random, let's set this to random where, where there is random. And this will give you a really interesting brush as you can see um, to work with with really interesting results. So I really uh, suggest that you experiment with the different shapes that you cut out uh, from the original picture. You can see here, I have more shapes that I experimented with um, where you have positive space or negative space inside and all of those give different kinds of results. So for example, this was also really interesting. Let's remove the other one real quick again. You can see you have smaller spikes here and um, you can do really interesting things with that and have some very nice results. Let's make the spacing actually a little bit bigger. So you can see here, you can have really crazy kind of shapes and brushes and designs that you can create with that, uh, depending on what you want to do. And you can do really interesting stuff with these kind of 
crazy um, brush designs or brush selections. Okay, another thing that I want to show you real quick also with the randomization is that you can actually randomize the color and this will enable you to create a rainbow brush. So let's do this real quick. I will just select a normal brush. Let's set it to any kind of color. So here we have red as a color. Make it a little bit bigger and you can see here it's just a red stripe. But if I go up here again in the settings into my dynamics, when I click down here, you can see you can have a hue chitter. Hue is the um, color selected, so you can have set it here to random. And now if I paint with this, you can see that this will create um, a rainbow shape. So let's set the spacing again to 1% to make this smoother. And uh, what I want to have right now, you can see it's on random, so it looks a little bit strange. Uh, it's uh, too mixed up. What we want to have, we want to set this to cycle. So it's cycling through the colors. And now if I do this, you can see that I have this nice rainbow um, shape where it's always following the same kind of pattern um, through the colors. And another thing that I can do to make this even more creative is up here, you can set um, basically how it's cycling through it, the speed, um, of uh, cycling it through it. So right now it's linear from one point to the other. Um, but if you if you um, do it like this, it will stay longer with some colors and then suddenly rise up to other colors. You can see, and now the, the um, rainbow is more irregular. I have more of the red colors in it. And you can really play around with this. For example, if I pull this down even more, uh, this will stay longer with a color. So that's a pretty nice um, kind of effect. There we go. You can see, so now it's really staying very long and the orange colors going back and forth between them and then bringing me just a short part of the blue colors. So really play around with these settings over here. And the cycling, like I said, it makes really uh, this kind of going backwards and forwards, but in a, in a controllable fashion. So that's really nice. And you can, of course, play around with these kind of settings. For example, you can also go by velocity, which means um, it's dependent on how fast uh, you're moving your brush. Let's set the spacing a little bit higher, like three. There we go. Remove this. And you can see now when I move my brush slow, it's in the orange area. But when I get faster, it's changing color. Let's wait, let's set the dynamic back um, to linear. There we go. Delete this real quick here in the background. And you can see, so this is staying here. And when I get faster with my brush, it's actually changing the color. Not, not really doing it, I don't know why. Okay. Good. So um, this was kind of the rainbow brush. Sorry, it got a bit messy in the end because um, of this velocity experiment that didn't work as expected. Um, the next thing that I want to show you is again with the textures. And that's a very interesting one because you can make um, also a brush with any kind of image basically, but with flower images. So I created a brush like this one here. Uh, from flowers. So I use this image. You can see, I will link it also in the video description. You can see we have different kind of blossoms here or flowers. And I cut them out. I remove the background and cut each um, blossom as an individual file without um, a background or with a transparent background. So when you use that, and you import it as your image brush. So let's let's do it step by step. You go up here, you say, um, new image brush and then you select the first blossom like this and then you go up here in more settings to textures and here like I said you can add more flowers if you want to. So let's select all of them. You have to select them individually. You can't um, select all of them at once I think. So right now what we have is these four flowers and up here you can see that they are repeating randomly. And what we can do is go up here to uh, general settings and to spacing and move the spacing up until they are not overlapping anymore like this. And now if I paint with my brush, the cool thing is, whoops, that's a bit too big maybe. 
The cool thing is that this will give me random flowers and I can make really nice designs or highlight elements, paint around them. It's a really nice way to use a brush and very different from the original way you would actually use or think about what a brush is doing in a software. As you can see, we can have really interesting kind of um, designs here with that. Okay, so these have been the five different ways um, of using brushes in a different way, in a different fashion. So thank you very much for watching. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. If you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my original files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your creations and also we can talk about other topics that you're interested in. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.